We're going to take a second look at a significance test. And again, significance tests are a formal method to test a claim. And we're just going to kind of take a closer look at p-value, null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, and really look at statistical significance and an alpha level. You know, when should we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? And so again, the best way to explore this is with a situation. So here, a reader from San Diego wrote, you, Dear Abby, you wrote in your column that a woman is pregnant for 266 days. Who said so? I carried my baby for 10 months and 5 days, about 310 days total. And there is no doubt about it because I know the exact date my baby was conceived. My husband is the, in the Navy and it couldn't possibly have been conceived any other time because I saw him only once for an hour and I didn't see him again until the day before the baby was born. I don't drink or run around and there's no way this baby isn't his. So please print a retraction about the 260 day, 66 day carrying time because otherwise I am in a lot of trouble. Signed, San Diego Reader. Again, and in, in I've done some research on this with the internet, and, uh, and it looks like even Google says that uh, the pregnancy duration has a mean closer to 281 days with a standard deviation of 13 days, and this may not be a normal distribution. I haven't done enough research, but, but we'll get into that later. For now, all we have is the problem above. So what are our null and hy alternative hypothesis in this case. So let's so go ahead and, and write down what you think they're going to be. I'm going to write my own down. So the null hypothesis is, remember, you always assume no change. So we're going to assume Dear Abby is right and the mean duration of uh, pregnancy is 266 days okay and so the alternate since since our reader had a, had a uh, pregnancy duration much bigger than that our null or our alternative hypothesis is going to be we're going to test it against it being greater than 266 days so that's our null and alternative hypothesis for this. We should also set an alpha level. Uh, what should the alpha level be set for? Well, in, in here, in most cases, we're just going to set that thing at 0.05. So this, if it's below 0.05, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than 0.05, we'll fail to reject. And, and that's another one we need to talk about is you either reject the HO, so reject HO, or you fail to reject HO. Okay. And so those are our two uh, possibilities, and that alpha level determines that. We're going to set it at 0.05. Uh, maybe Dear Abby would think her reputation's on the line and and look for a, a, well, obviously the San Diego Reader's reputation's on the line and, and she wants to set a pretty low uh, alpha level. Just depends on the situation, but we're just going to uh, go to the default 0.05. So again, we're going to look at uh, tinker plots and see the situation because I happen to have a file already preloaded that has these pregnancy links uh, given. And so this thing, this is a bin with a thousand pregnancy durations. Uh, we could assume this is the, a thousand durations that Dear Abby collected for her column. However you want to want to do that. And this will run, this will randomly pick 100 of these out of this bin, 
100 pregnancy lists out of this bin because we don't want to look at all a thousand. Let's just do, a, you know, you could imagine this out of millions of pregnancies if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. Whoops, I ran it too fast there. Let's slow that down so you can kind of see what's happening here. So it's mixing them up and it picked 240. Mixing them up, picked 251. Mixing them up just to show you that it's random, 255. Okay, yeah, that's enough of that. So here's all 100 pregnancies we picked. So let's plot that and see what it looks like. So I'm going to drag a plot down. Uh, we can get this stuff out of the way. Uh, get this maybe out of the way since we've collected the data. And blow this up. Let's put it clear up here at the top, drag it down. So there's our 100 pregnancies. We'll separate those. Uh, let's see, we've got a max of 329 days. Maybe let's make that uh, 340. And let's change the bin width to 5 just to see if we can get a little more division in there. Yeah, that's not bad. Stack them. I didn't need to go clear up to 40. And hey, that looks pretty good. So there's our 100 pregnancy lengths. Uh, 301, looks like 301 to 305 is our max bin. And so we have the situation where 310 is over here. So our p-value is 0 in our simulation. So no pregnancies uh, occurred above 310 days according to our our data. So we've got a problem here. Uh, maybe not a problem. But so how we can interpret this and I've already interpreted it. I knew the I knew the answer ahead of time. So our p-value is approximately zero. You know, we from our sample, from our simulation, it's zero. So we would say something like this. And this is, interpreting this is as important as anything we do here. So based on the San Diego Reader's pregnancy duration, the p-value of 0 is less than our set alpha level of 0.05, definitely below 0.05. So, so we should reject the null hypothesis that the pregnancy duration is 266 days. Therefore, the San Diego reader, if she's telling the truth, has evidence to suggest that the mean pregnancy duration is indeed greater than 266 days. And so you have to, the question comes up, who's lying? Is Dear Abby the columnist lying? Or is the San Diego Reader lying? And there are, uh, if, you, if you research it, you looks like we've got more studying to do because it is indeed 280 days for pregnancy length and uh, there's a, with a standard deviation of 13 and that'll be for a video in the future to uh, take this a step further and actually do a statistics uh, a test for significance on a different set of data that's more accurate so I hope this helps. Uh, again, hopefully that gives you kind of a general idea of significance tests and just another example to take a look at. See you next time.